Hi everyone, welcome back to Calvi Homestead. Today we are talking about raising hogs for meat. Um, so for the past several years, we have been raising our own hogs for meat. We haven't bought pork from the grocery store in, I, I don't even know, years and years. It's been so long. Um, but today I wanted to kind of show you uh, after we raised our hogs, what we got out of them and how much it cost. So let's go ahead and just get into it. All right, we are back. We, we just went and picked up our hog and I kind of wanted to go through with you guys what all we got from our hog. Now, I just recently shot um, and showed you our freezers um, for the start of pantry challenge and not two days later, I got a call to pick up our hog. Um, so let's kind of go over some numbers here. Um, the live weight of our hogs was a little smaller than we typically have. Um, and that's because when I went and picked up these hogs, they were supposed to be around roughly 90 pounds and they ended up being about 40. Um, so we grew them out the same amount of time we typically grow out hogs, but which means that they didn't get quite as big as they usually do. So keep that in mind whenever you're raising hogs. If you get them, the smaller you get them, the longer you're gonna have to grow them out. I didn't grow them out longer, which means we got um hogs that were a smaller weight so our live weight on our hog was 264 pounds the hanging weight on our hog um so that's after they dispatch it and clean it all out was 168 pounds in total the meat we got back was 135 pounds so I don't feel like that's a very bad, um, you know, what we got back was a pretty good percentage. Um, so everybody kind of gets their hog cuts different. Um, so we're gonna kind of go over what we do. Now, typically we get a lot of ground pork. We didn't do that this time, and I'll show you why and what we got instead. So let me grab a knife here, I have it somewhere. And we're just gonna start opening up bags and I'm gonna show you the type of stuff we got and how much of each we got. So, and then toward the end of this video also, I will show you um, how much it costs to raise this pork. So, in this first bag, these are pork ribs. So these are spare ribs, I believe. We can't get baby back ribs because we like to get our bone-in pork chops. So in order to get our bone-in pork chops, we don't get baby back ribs, but we can still get our spare ribs. And so here is a pack of spare ribs. Uh, amazing size, the marbling is really nice. Um, so how many pounds of those do we get? Baby back ribs, or no, not baby back ribs. We got 6.06 .06 pounds, which I'm assuming is these two right here. So here are our ribs. And now typically when we cook these, um, we'll cut them into smaller, like more manageable sizes, unless we're smoking the whole rib in our smoker. So I don't know how we're gonna do with room on this table, but we'll manage. Um, <clears throat> so something we love, and it's our absolute favorite whenever we get pork, is getting our um, bone-in pork chops. I don't like boneless pork chops 
Um, I like the bone in because you get a lot more marbling, a lot more flavor marbling as far as like meat around the bone. Um, so we did packs of two with these and we did them one inch thick and they are actually, I might bring a couple up close so you can see them because they look amazing. Yeah, these look great. And let's go over the numbers for this real quick. So our bone in pork chops, um, we ended up getting 27.24 pounds of bone in pork chops. So I'm going to bring them around and show them to you. So these are what the bone in pork chops look like. Um, and we got them an inch thick because we love to grill these. I have a, a really good marinade for these. Um, with fresh basil. So these are our favorite during the summer. Um, so there's one pack. My fingers are burning. They're so cold. And here's another pack. Look at the marbling in our pork. That is amazing. And they look so good. These are our favorite. I actually probably should have worn gloves doing this because my fingers already hurt. Um, so I think the majority of this bag... The rest of it is pork chops. Let's take a peek. I think so, because it says this bag weighed 35.70 pounds and we had those ribs in here. So I'm going to assume that these are, the rest of these are pork chops. There might be pork chops in other bags as well. We'll see. I'm gonna stick the ribs back in here. We can move to the next bag. All right, we're gonna move on to this bag now. Cut it open carefully. Um, so, well, let me show you these first. So these are our um, cured ham hocks. So we, get, we got them cured, and I might actually um, smoke some of these for ham and beans to bring out the flavor. Let me see how many pounds of <clears throat> ham hocks I got so before they were cured they were 8.3 pounds after they were cured they were 6.27 pounds so we have 6.27 pounds of ham hocks and I'll, let me bring a couple up to show you so these are the ham hocks packaged up so those would be good for some ham and beans is what mainly we're going to use these for and then let's see what else is in this bag. Those are hocks as well. Okay, it looks like the rest of this bag is one of our favorite things. So we didn't get plain ground pork because we love this place's um, breakfast sausage. And we don't like to get it like in the bulk breakfast sausage. We get it and patties like this and we ended up getting in the breakfast sausage 41.58 pounds and that will not even last us a year we love this stuff so much we cook it so much um and the packaging with these is amazing the seasoning the seasoning they use is so good so that's what those look like and this year they packaged them way better so i'm really really happy with this and this is like one of our favorite things to get from our hogs except for the pork chops the breakfast sausage and pork chops are tied for our favorite things <clears throat> so i think that was it in this bag let's move on to the next bag um so there is some summer sausage I keep saying summer sausage, breakfast sausage. There is still some breakfast sausage in this bag. So I'm just going to pull those out to the side. I don't think I have to pull all of it out of this bag because I think the rest of this bag is actually bacon. Now, we have had hogs processed at multiple different places. Um, throughout the years this is our favorite place we have found for bacon one of my tips if you are going to raise hogs 
<clears throat> and you are going to have them processed by someone else. One of my tips would be to go to that processor or butcher shop and ask, ask to try their bacon and ask to try their breakfast sausage because there have been many, many, many times where we have gone to places and we did not like how their bacon turned out. Um, bacon is the biggest thing. Uh, try their bacon. If you don't try anything else from them, try their bacon first because we have gotten bacon back from our hogs that is really hard to cook with. So either it's way too salty um, or when you cook it, it burns immediately because it doesn't caramel, like when it starts to caramelize and cook, the it just starts to burn. Like, I don't know, maybe it's something they used in their cure. This place that we have found near us and we have been using them for a few years now, um, is the best in our area. Um, so in bacon, let's look at the numbers. In bacon, we got back 12.78 pounds. And then our cured jowl, which we use kind of interchangeably with bacon, um, we got 1.81 pounds after it was cured. So let me grab a pack of bacon and a pack of jowls. Okay, so before I come over and show you, it looks like I have a pack here that's um, cured, cured bacon, but it's more like bits, so it must have been like end bits. So this is not our jowl. Oh, here's a jowl. Okay. Um, I find that the jowl tends to be a bit more fatty. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind whenever you're cooking with it. So here's our cured jowl. And jowl is um, obviously not the same length as bacon, so you're going to get it smaller pieces. You can use it like bacon, but if you look at it, it is just a lot more fatty than typical bacon. Um, so just, just look up recipes on how you might be able to use it, but look at this. Look at this. It is so good. <laughs> Their bacon is so good. Now, our hogs, look, if you look at this side... You can see that it does have a good fat cap on it, a nice a nice amount of fat, but it also has a nice amount of meat. So the fat to meat ratio is uh, really nice. Keep in mind that your fat to meat ratio will kind, kind of um, vary depending on what you feed your hogs. Um, if you just do straight feed the whole time, their fat to meat ratio will be different. Um, so we, we have a milk cow and we would clabber milk and feed it to the hogs. They got a lot of kitchen scraps. So it kind of varies. It depends what you feed them uh, as far as what your meat to, to fat ratio is gonna be in your bacon. And it's also going to depend on how, um, how you feed them is going to depend on, you know, the marbling in your like chops and stuff like that or, or pork chops. Something we did we don't get out of our hogs are pork tenderloins because in order to get the pork tenderloin, they have to take the chops and cut them off the bone in a long loin. We love our chops. I'd rather eat pork chops than pork tenderloin because with the bone in there, you get a little bit more um, meat on there that is more marbled. It's just in our personal experience, we like to grill pork chops rather than cook up a pork loin. Back down to this last bag. Hopefully I'm not missing anything because some of this stuff is buried in here. Right here. Okay, so whenever you have a hog processed, I feel like typically they're going to ask you, do you want your hams cut into steaks or do you want your hams whole and cured? And what I tell them is neither. So I tell them that I want one of my hams tossed in with the trim to grind and make our breakfast sausage. Or you can say, I want my ham um, thrown in with the trim for ground pork or breakfast sausage links. Um, we had one whole ham leg, leg ham, 
thrown in to get as much breakfast sausage as we could because that is one of our favorites. The other ham we had made into pork cutlets. So that is like little pork steaks that are tenderized. And so that's what you typically see like fried up, um, like breaded and fried. I love to use it in a pork and rice dish. I also love to use it as stir fry. But one year we got both hams cut into cutlets because don't get me wrong, I love the cutlets, but it was just too many cutlets. We don't use cutlets enough um, to have both hams made into cutlets. So we do have cutlets here. Um, oh, let me see how many pounds of cutlets we got. Okay, so one ham cut into cutlets was 11.82 pounds. So, and it says it's in 10 packages. So let me show you a couple packages. So these packages are a little bit harder to see because they're just packaged up and they're, they kind of smoosh together, but I'll have to, I'll make a recipe with them soon and um, show you. But if we get up close, you can see how they're like, see that they're tenderized. So the steak sizes vary and it kind of depends what part of the ham they're cutting that little steak off of to tenderize. But I've gotten them, you know, this size before. I don't know if you can see that. I've gotten them this size before. I've got cutlets this size before because it depends on what part of that ham they are cutting those cutlets off of. So we got 10 packages of those, which is great because we actually still have some cutlets left in our freezers, which I just pulled one out the other day and made stir fry with it. And it makes the best stir fry. Like you don't think of stir fry, you don't think of using pork when you make stir fry, but with cutlets, it's good. Something else we do with cutlets, and actually my husband kind of like came up with this, is he would take the cutlets, bread them in like the Andes fish fry seasoning, and then fry them up and put them on a bun. And he would do, he does that mainly when he's out hunting. And uh, so he really likes them that way too. Let's see what else we got in here. I have a feeling I'm going to drop stuff. All right, let me grab a couple to show you because typically your cuts are gonna vary. They're not gonna be perfect cuts. So next I'm gonna show you pork steaks. So you can either get a um, pork roast, so like something you would smoke or put in a crock pot and make pulled pork out of, or you can get that cut into pork steaks. I would prefer it being cut into pork steaks. So we got both of our um, butt roasts basically made into pork steaks. So we did two per pack, one inch thick, and we got 14.65 pounds, which was six packages. And let me show you what they look like. So here's one pack of pork steaks and there's two in there, cut an inch thick. But look at the marbling on these. I feel like a butt roast is typically pretty marbled, but it looks really good. Here's another pack. So these are gonna be really good this summer. And if you're in the mood for pulled pork, you can pull out a pack of pork steaks, throw them in your crock pot or on the smoker. Um, they're just not gonna take as long as, as a, a pork butt would take. And then you just pull the meat and have pulled pork. Okay, I feel like I have one more thing to show you, but let me go through my list. <clears throat> Cutlets, bacon, jowl, hocks. Oh, I did do... I did do one pork shoulder roast, and it says it was 2.32 pounds. I don't know where it is in all the midst of this. Um... But when I'm putting it up, I'll probably find it and be able to show you. So I did do one shoulder roast. Um, and then I didn't do butt roast. I got the pork steaks. And then we did, we did not do tenderloin or loin roast because we got our pork chops. We did not get baby back ribs because we got our pork chops. But we did get like the lower ribs. And then pork chops. Okay. 
and it looks like oh our breakfast sausage so it looks like I ha should have the the heart in here and the tongue in here and I don't see them but again it's a lot to go through um, so when I'm putting it all up maybe we'll find it but I do have one more thing to show you <clears throat> Two more things but they're pretty much the same thing so whenever they make your breakfast sausage or just ground pork or or whatever they use the lard from your hog so I tell them I always want any lard that is left over I want it so this is the back fat lard which is still good to use and this was 6.67 pounds so there's that it does have, have some meaty bits so if you're gonna um, melt this up for long-term storage to use as lard um, you just got to make sure you trim your meat pieces off and then this is the lard that is like gold this is your leaf lard so not as much of this because this was used in our breakfast sausage, but we do have a little bit of this yummy goodness for use. So I tried to take a peek through the rest of this bag and I did not see the tongue or the heart in there. And I did not see my shoulder roast in there. So we are gonna have to make sure we keep an eye out for those um, while we are putting our pork up into the freezer um I am gonna have to move some stuff around but I just kind of wanted to show you guys what to expect there are different cuts you can get so if you like boneless pork chops you can get your baby back ribs we're not huge rib people I would rather have those bone-in pork chops um same with your hams you don't have to get a ham um you can have it thrown into trim to make breakfast sausage or um, bratwurst even if you want to have bratwurst made so it really just depends how you like it I, we don't ever get ham we're not um, big ham eaters and I don't find that when you get a ham from a hog you've processed it, it's not what you're thinking of it's not like a ham you get from the store which is fine because we don't prefer it anyway um, so we do those cutlets and that is a trick we learned my mom told me about doing the hams into cutlets and we have fallen in love with the cutlets now we're kind of like on the verge of being tired of them because we always have so many that's why this year we only did one ham in two cutlets the rest we threw into the trim because of the breakfast sausage we'll see we're gonna get another um, set of hogs this spring so we'll be doing this again to show you the process and um, I'm gonna go put this stuff back up and if I find those cuts we're missing or that I didn't see in here, I will make sure and show them to you. But then we'll get into the breakdown on how much everything costs. All right, so I found everything I couldn't find while I was showing you guys. Um, this is just the chair in the shop here. But um, so these are two breakfast sausages that I pulled out and we're just gonna put them in our freezer up in the RV um, since they don't lay as flat as the other ones um every all the other ones look perfect though so this is the shoulder roast i don't know exactly what i'll do with this but she asked me if i wanted it or for it to be made into trim and i said i wanted it because we did have a lot of trim going and i wanted some kind of roast it, it looks a little leaner than your typical roast so maybe i'll look some stuff up for that um here's the tongue i don't know what i'm doing with this yet um, I want to look up, I don't know if, I don't know, but I didn't want it to go to waste. I didn't want it to just get thrown away. So I had them, I had them keep it. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if we do anything with this. And this also, this is the heart. Look how big it is. Um, I don't know what we're going to do with this yet either. I'm sure there's something we can figure out. Um, but I didn't want it just tossed because... Yeah, that's wasteful. So I didn't get the liver. I don't know why. I said I wanted it. Um, and I didn't get the head, which I wanted as well. Um, so I don't know why those weren't in there. They weren't on my on my sheet. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure. But I just kind of want to show you what the freezer looks like. 
now that <laughs> now that everything's in there so if you guys watched my pantry challenge um video my first pantry challenge video i showed you this freezer well here's an update <laughs> here's an update on it so down here in these two drawers that is deer grind meat because we're going to be making summer sausage and bratwurst and you guys will be coming along with us on that and then there's some more grind meat behind these potatoes these two right here all the way back is our breakfast sausage and that's really exciting <laughs> and then here is our bacon pork steaks all in here um these are pork steaks uh ribs Ta right here is a rib these are all the pork chops down in this bottom shelf those are all the cutlets i think i did throw a couple cutlets in here because they wouldn't all fit on this shelf here's one as well move the cherry tomatoes and stuff over here and then potatoes more cherry tomatoes and deer meat and then the top here is all deer meat yes all deer meat up in here all deer meat in here except for some frozen veggies here here's the lard and then here is the um um cured jowl here so yeah i think that's uh i'm pretty happy with how our freezer looks right now um we need to start eating this <laughs> because we're gonna be raising another hog in the spring and just keep them keep them moving on so so as you can see, there are multiple cuts you can get from your hog, and that really just all depends on your family's personal preference. Um, you can also see the marbling in that pork and just the huge difference just by looks um, compared to the grocery store. I have looked at grocery store pork just out of curiosity just to see what it looks like compared to you know what we get back from our hogs and it's insane it's insane the difference of it what's even more insane is the taste of it there is a huge difference you can tell it is homegrown it tastes so much better it has so much more flavor and you know how that animal was treated because you raised it yourself so let's go ahead and talk numbers now numbers are really really going to depend on your area um if you are raising your own hogs already and are breeding them it's going to depend on how much you buy your piglet for and it's going to depend on how big that piglet is when you get it so typically what we try to do is when we buy our piglets we typically want them around 90 pounds um, this year, as you can see at the beginning of the video, those piglets were not 90 pounds. So we started off with a smaller weight piglet, which is going to affect the meat we get back, the amount of meat we get back, unless we raise them longer. So we could have grown them out longer, but we had already had a um, date set with our butcher, which, you know, that's going to depend too. You need to make sure you can get into the butcher. Uh, your cost is also going to depend on what your butcher charges. So um, we bought our piglets for $65 each. Um, sometimes you can get them cheaper. Sometimes they're more. Again, it depends on your area. Um, and then, then we had to pay for feed. So for the cost of the piglet, this is each now. Each piglet costs... $300 to raise up to butcher. So that is including the cost of the piglet itself and the feed. So $300 altogether to buy the piglet and feed it out. Again, we started with a smaller um, animal this year, so it did not get to the size we typically get them to. So um, I'd say on average, about 300 pounds is when we take them to the processor. So, um, and then the processing fee, that costs us $300. That also depends on what cut you get. So you saw in the video, we got a ton of breakfast sausage and that costs more per pound to make. Um, 
Also, if you were to get brats, that's going to cost more per pound. If you do not get anything cured but bacon, your bill is going to be cheaper. So I want to say to make the sausage patties um, that we got back, it was an additional $1.25 a pound to make those sausage patties. And we got, what, 40-something pounds of those? So that was an additional cost on top. So it, it really just depends. So the total per pound that we paid for our hogs from the meat we got back was $4.44 per pound. Now, that is th this year has probably been one of the, um, I guess, worst years for price per pound that all came from getting those piglets too small and taking them to butcher at a smaller um, size so would we have spent a little more in feed had we bought 90 pound piglets and grown them out for the five months yes but per, but our cost per pound still would have went down so I think on average I can say it's four dollars or under per pound this year it was $4.44 per pound, which is still amazing. And I would pay that all day long for farm-raised pork, especially when I raise it. It's just, I feel better about it. I know how they were treated. I know what they were eating. Um, you can also save on some food costs um, if you are feeding a lot of scraps. We did feed a lot of scraps. Um, but it didn't like make a huge difference. We didn't feed like an absorbent amount of scraps to kind of change that feed cost. But you saw that those hogs were beautifully marbled, which I don't feel like you see in the grocery store. I've never seen a pork chop in the grocery store marbled like our homegrown pork chops. You just don't. So per hog, the cost of buying it, the cost of feed, and the cost to butcher was about $600 and we got 135 pounds of meat back, which comes out to $4 and 44 cents a pound. I think that's amazing. I am so happy with it. I am in no way, shape or form upset with the cost per pound. And there are ways you can go about making that cost per pound cheaper. Um, it depends on what feed you use, um, how much scraps you give them. If you have a milk cow, are you feeding them milk from your milk cow? Um, there's so many things. How much does your butcher uh, charge to, to butcher your hog? Um, how much did you buy the hog for? What size did you, how long did you grow them out? There's so many um, just differences that can come. So whenever I say it costs me per hog about $600 from start to freezer, don't be scared of that number because that probably isn't going to be your number. Um, some people can do it for a lot cheaper. It are you, are you butchering it yourself? That would save you a ton of money right there. We do plan to butcher ourselves eventually in the future. We are just not versed enough yet to do that. Um, but we are getting there. We are we are working our way toward that. But I just kind of wanted to share our experience with you guys and how much it costs. I love raising hogs. They're actually extremely easy to raise in my opinion. So I hope this was super informative um, for you guys. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or you can mes message me on Instagram at Calvi Homestead. Um, I try to answer everybody's questions as best as I possibly can. I'm in no way, shape or form a uh, professional when it comes to growing out hogs or raising cows or gardening, but I, I feel like I do have some knowledge that I can share with you guys, especially for people who have never done it before. And I didn't grow up farming. It just, it's just something I dreamed about doing for so long. And we kind of just jumped right in. I'm not saying you should jump right in, but we learned a lot just by hands-on experience on raising them. You know, I've read books, I've watched videos. Um, there's so much stuff and I'm still always learning. I'm, I'm not, you know, the best at this or the best at that. It just comes with experience really. Anyway, I hope this was super informative for you guys and I hope that you were able to pull some great tips out of it 
if you were thinking about raising hogs yourself and I hope it helps you if you are. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.